I see a lot of girls these days being stressed, depressed, low self-esteem. Why? Typically because they've been through a string of relationships with abusive motherfuckers or they're currently in one or have just come out of one. Now, I've noticed a lot of the time the similar strategies are employed by these motherfuckers. First, they will isolate the girl away from her friends, away from her family to keep them trapped on his island, you know, marooned with him alone. And they will deliberately sabotage and push their partner to cut ties with everyone else out of jealousy, out of possessiveness, out of a need to control because they're afraid, low self-esteem wise, they're paranoid that the girlfriend is gonna go off somewhere else. And this is in proportion to how beautiful the girl is, at least perceptibly to him. The hotter she is, the more beautiful she is, the more he will try to cut her off. How else does he do this? Well, with drugs as well. Get her hooked on drugs, typically meth, and then become the sole source and supply of constant, readily on tap, available drugs when you need it. So not only are you trapped in this island without lifeboats and other people to help you, but now the thing you need, the thing you're addicted to, are growing from the trees on this island. So you're more inclined to stay. And this is also, like I said, in proportion to how good looking they are. They'll, they'll just fucking do whatever they need to do to keep you there. Uh, how else do they do that? They will undermine you. They will make you feel like a piece of shit. They will tell you, you aren't good enough. You're pathetic. You're useless. You can never get anyone else. You're too much work. You're this, you're that. They will do whatever they can. If you're a beautiful, majestic bird with amazing wings, with the potential to fly anywhere you want with any other guy, they will clip your wings and they will make you be convinced that you're nothing but a piece of poo with two sets of twigs for wings. So you can't fly at all. So you're just stuck in that island for good. And that's what they do. I noticed the strategy employed. And, you know, recently I reconnected with a friend. It was October 20 when I'd spoken with her. I hadn't seen her in 10 years time. And funny enough, it happened to be a year to the day since my cousin, unfortunately, took her in life. Okay? And the big proponent of that was a relationship that she had been through. Uh, a lot of things had happened in this relationship. But it was basically a, a domestically abusive toxic relationship and it was it just it just broke the straw that broke the camel's back so a year later when i'm chatting to my friend who i haven't seen in 10 years time and she's telling me that she's having thoughts and she's in a dark place and that she's also um had some hard times recently not so much domestic abuse but she has gone through years and years with some other guys who undermined her and abused her physically as well as mentally, emotionally. All right, so where she is now at this point of feeling like worthless and feeling like a burden on, uh, to everyone and feeling guilty and anxious, a lot of that is to do with all that shit, the string of exes, right? Abusive motherfuckers. So when she tells me that at the moment she's in, in this place um, just because of stressful circumstances at the moment and, uh, and some stuff that had happened, a lot of it was actually very similar to my cousin exactly one year before. And when she dropped a certain word, I was like, Dar, I need to call you. We got to talk. And we, we talked. I tried to empower her, help her build a vision of why life is worth living, of, uh, of how, gr how much capacity she has and, and potential she has in life. Um, to try and pull her away from thinking about the past and all these voices in her head saying she's worthless. Now, um, she ended up, you know, being in hospital just for whatever reason, because um, she got low. And and when she came out, while she was out, it was discovered that her partner at the time, um, who was cooking up some stuff in the kitchen, or Dimmy. Um, that stuff was discovered by the person who went in the house to help get this person's things. So it was reported to, to a relative who owned the house and basically she told my friend, you've got to get out within a week. This is while she's in fucking hospital. You've got to get out in a week because we found all this stuff there. So she had a week to go, you know, I found this out. I found out there was a lot of gardening work to be done and there was. Um, about a day and a half's work, so I stayed there the night on the couch as I did, as I do, and fucking did the gardening, right? And it helped out, and she paid me for it, 
because I'm a fucking gardener. It's what I do. She needed a hand. Her partner was too busy in Greylands having another relapse because he's been known to have a few dangerous, toxic episodes hurting people and violating their boundaries. That's not a stretch of anything. That's just a statement of observation and account, recorded account. All right, recorded account by many witnesses. So he was having another relapse in the hospital. Couldn't help her. So I was like, I'll help. I end up getting death threats from this motherfucker for that because his girlfriend, who he apparently... He, being with, he must love and respect and care for her best interests. Who just came out of hospital needs a hand, needs help with a gardening. A friend happened to come and help, and because of that, um, I get the death threat. Instead of oh, thank you for being there, bro. When I'm too much of a fucking crazy bitch to do it myself, instead of being like, you know, thanks, man, for helping her out, because you know, fucking, she's so inundated with shit at the moment. I don't know if she could have taken all that by herself. The stress. Thanks for helping. So that is like, oh no, our relationship is over, dog. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna hunt you down and you can kill you. All this shit. I'm like, I'm just on my ground. I was like, fuck off, man. What the fuck are you on about? I'm here to do the fucking gardening. I'm not gonna do anything with your fucking missus. Ten years ago, some shit already happened while she had a partner. I felt like shit because I respect this person and I've got more respect for me now and the other person they're dating. If anything, I respect this person so much and love them so much that as a friend. And even potentially as more. Go fuck yourself. I'm not going to lie. But does that mean I'm going to be a weasel? No. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it fucking proper. I'm going to make sure you motherfuckers are finished. Okay? I don't mean I'm going to make sure you're finished and make it happen. I mean, on its natural terms, when it should happen, when it's right to happen, then it would be more appropriate. And even then, I don't want to just go in there and fucking steal or go in there and, and bang your mind because people need time to heal. All right, and to properly move on. I'm not a child. It's not all just about getting my dick wet, dude. So I did the gardening, stayed on the couch, out of respect, and that's what she wanted anyway. Because, you know, why the fuck don't you trust your girl, man? Like, that says more about you and your issues, huh? I mean, why are you with someone if you don't trust them? Unless you're desperate and you just say yes because you need your dick sucks and you need a hug every now and then, but you don't really trust them. You're not really ready to be in a relationship with them. But you would do it anyway because what are you one of those cunts that just wants to keep them keep them limited on your island? So anyway, all this shit was cooked out. She gets kicked kicked out because he was cooking the shit up, and um, basically the gas for anyone who knows cooking Dimmy takes hours. Four hundred and fifty dollar gas bill usually it's one fifty. So she asked him, "Can you pay the three hundred, please? Don't worry about the seventy five for the phone you owe." Just that, please. He's like, oh, no. Because uh, he, he's gone paranoid since then. She's in another relationship, right? So he's like, oh, well, I don't see how that I should have to pay. It's a bit rich considering all the weed I, I shouted you. And uh, considering that you're, you're seeing someone else and you're not with me, blah, blah. Like, sticking your dick in someone means you own them. And that you're only obligated to do what's right by them. Provided that they stay with you. Is that what you think? That they're, you're only obligated to take accountability and pay your fucking dues while they're still sucking your dick and hugging you and being your girlfriend. And if not, if they happen to because, and this is a mutual thing apparently, these people split mutually, all right? Because they both need to sort their shit out. Um, and I think she had bloody good reasons to, even if she did decide to, to, to pull that, that cord by herself, but that wasn't the case. And now he's just writing a fiction and, and treating it as fact that she's doing this and that and using it as justification to take what was offering weed, as one does, as being an Indian giver now and saying, oh, well, actually, I was just secretly keeping a, a tab and the money I owe for the bill, um, it's, it's gone on the weed because you smoked all the weed. And uh, oh, because you're not with me anymore, any agreement we had as two individuals doesn't matter anymore. And this is what I mean. Now she's got the stress of this. Now she's got the stress of an extra few hundred dollars that she doesn't have on top of other demands financially. She hasn't just lost this place. Now she's in the rear, uh, rear is three hundred dollars plus three seventy five. He hasn't paid that one yet. So, and now he, you know, and this is what it comes back to: is guys thinking they can just exploit girls and get what they want out of them and treat them with respect and hold up their fucking 
end of the bargain, end of the deal, hold up their fucking whatever they're obligated to do, what's right, their dues, to pay their dues. And the second the girl stops playing their game the way they want to play, even if they're being respectful and they're still like, dude, I'm not, I don't have an issue with you, just because they're not dating them anymore, that, that's enough reason to get sour puss and to turn into a fucking asshole and just do what's wrong by them and no longer do what's right. I think it's gross. I think it's gross. Guys that will ruin and push people potentially to the fucking edge just because they're so lost up their own toxic, selfish, motherfucking childish asses.